My story began some years ago when I began to look at my own family history and uh, I was I was interested in that because uh, uh, I had one or two people who sort of uh, who made reference to my grandfather or my great grandfather who was a uh, uh, quite a well-known poet here in the Rosendale Valley. Uh, and when I began to research into that, I found that his father also was uh, a bard in Mayo and was known as the Bard of Nephin. Uh, he was uh, formerly a hedge teacher, and uh, in 1840 uh, he founded the... Uh, Rathkell uh, National School when uh, education was first being permitted uh, for uh, Catholic children in uh, in the Irish Republic or in Ireland as it was then. Uh, uh, there is a I have visited uh, Mayo and Ireland and I have visited the school which has now been rebuilt uh, over a hundred years ago. But the original foundation stone uh, with his name on it is still in the wall of the school. Uh, a former head teacher of the school, uh, hus whose husband was a, a, a historian, had uh, investigated uh, hedge teaching generally, and, uh, and he had a particular interest in uh, Andrew Erston because his wife was teaching at the same school uh, that he had founded and many of his family and many of the families of Rathkell and, uh, and Cross Molina and uh, Adagul uh, had all attended this school. So it, it became sort of uh, an interest to pursue. Uh, if only I'd known at the time how much time I would need to actually follow it up. But... Uh, <laughs> I got there in the end to some extent, but it's never ending, and I'm still doing it. So, Andrew, I'll, I'm going to read from a, a, a document that I've got here that I've, I've written myself, actually, and it's Andrew Hurston, the Neef in Bad, born in Mayo, thought, supposedly, round about 1790, married a Bridget O'Boyle in Adagul, on the 15th of October in 1840. Uh, and uh, that was a, my great-great-great-grandfather. Uh, the first record of the Houston family in East Lancashire, where I lived, was in uh, 1861 on the census. And uh, the record showed that uh, Bridget, the wife of the Bard of Neefin, uh, was uh, lodging in Rochdale with a family uh, in a, a one-bedroomed house in, and there was 11 people living in this one-bedroomed house. And even more interestingly, every one of those 11 people, including a, uh, a, a, an under 12-month-old baby, was shown as working in the local cotton mill. When I went into that, the cotton mills apparently were much warmer than the houses, so uh, the mothers and parents used to take the children and put them in a box under the looms uh, because it was a warm place and it was uh, uh, something of a lullaby for the children to actually uh, sleep to, the rattling of the looms, we would have called it. Uh, my, 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 my grandfather was uh, born in Rosendale and... Uh, he used to write regularly to the local papers uh, and uh, and comment. Uh, I have to say, not apparently politically, but uh, uh, sort of uh, with with some uh, feeling of, of of association with Ireland. He wrote a great deal about his Irish home and his Irish people. None of them, which none of his uh, contributions, which have ever referred to the famine, but uh, he was uh, fond of memories of his of his childhood in Ireland. He uh, he then went on to eventually marry three times. Uh, his first wife died uh, quite early in uh, in the marriage, 
uh, leaving uh, along with three of the children, uh, and he remarried again, and then uh, for a sol for a long time the second marriage. Uh, I was unable to find any sort of separation or divorce, but eventually I did. Uh, and she had emigrated to America and was living in America. And uh, she divorced him for his uh, philandering with uh, other women in Manchester. Uh, he, had, uh, he, had a, he, had a, he had a final marriage to a, a woman from St. Helens. In uh, in the Liverpool area, and there was a the the the, the record shows there's a huge uh, number of Houstons or Houstons uh, born and living in Liverpool. None of them, or none of which, I've been able to connect to my family, but uh, that probably goes back to an earlier history, uh, which I have to thank uh, Doherty for, and he was the edge, the edge teacher uh, historian. And he'd uh, uh, he believed that uh, Houston came uh, when they came to Mayo from the north of Ireland, and uh, uh, and and uh, established the Mayo Houstons uh, that way. So many of the Houstons from the north may not be relative to the Houstons of Mayo, but mm -hmm. on the other hand, they may be. Uh, but it's a big task to actually pursue it. I'll, I'll come to a point here where uh, uh, an obituary in the Rosendale paper, the Wake Up Times, uh, in August 1920, made this reference to the death of Andrew Houston, the bard of Rosendale. Uh, he was a frequent contributor to the columns of leading journals in Liverpool and St. Helens, and also the Freeman's Journal and the Rosendale newspapers. His work was published in 100 poems on the European war and in Forshaw's edition of Pearls of Poetry. Other of his efforts which gained favourable acclaim were his tribute to the loss of the Titanic and the memory of King Edward VII. Well, his eldest son, or rather his youngest son, was Thomas, who was my grandfather. Uh, and uh, he had four children, my father, William, uh, brothers James, Thomas and Andrew. This Andrew name continues to recur. Uh, and they all married, of course, in Rosendale and uh, had families. Uh, so the, uh, the link with Rosendale was quite strong, sort of uh, probably as strong as the link with Mayo. But the, there is a, 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 a he has a, a book which is published which I have uh, uh, published in 1920 and uh, it's sort of a, 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 a gather a, a, all of the things that he written all the poems that he written to the press and uh, and a few others which he hadn't written but uh, we're all very interesting but very interesting to local people rather than. Uh, and temporal, of course, as well, you know. Mm. So, uh, it, it, it's, the, the interesting thing was that in 1939, the Bard of Nefin, uh, my grandfather's grandfather, was was a Bard, uh, and, and a renowned Bard. And quite interestingly, uh, quite recently, I found a reference to him uh, in uh, in a an Irish historical archive about hedge teachers. And I've, I've written it down somewhere and I can't find it, but I, I've got it written somewhere and I'll find it eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can pass these things on to you, but I'm sure mm -hmm. you, your, your researchers will have uh, got to, to that level. So I, I think that uh, although there was no sort of mention uh, about the famine in, in my family history, uh, given the fact that uh, that my family lived in the west west of Mayo, uh, certainly between 1820 and 1860, uh, there is a great likelihood that they were impacted by the the famine. Uh, and yet, in all the writings and all the references that I've looked at, there has been no reference by anybody to the fact to the famine fact. 
which actually tells a story in itself. They, they, they talked about the future. They went to America, they went to Australia, they went to New Zealand, they came to Lancashire and Yorkshire, and, uh, and didn't talk about the famine, but looked to the future, which I think is a big telling story about the, uh, the attitudes of the Irish people uh, who were faced with situations which we wouldn't be able to comprehend today. One other interesting story I think is probably worth mentioning is that my, my father had a, had a book. Uh, this would be in the late 40s, maybe into the early 50s, but I suspect uh, late 40s, which was a, a story or a collection of stories about uh, the cruelty of the occupy, occupying British or English armies. Uh, in Mayo, and uh, I, I did I did read this as as a, as a child, maybe nine or ten year old, and uh, it had it had a great impact on me. One of the stories that stands out was uh, was about the, the, this particular village where all the villagers were herded onto a pond, which was frozen, and forced to stay there uh, by the by the troops. Uh, uh, and, uh, and and until they collapsed and, and into the ice and then and into, into the water and all died. Uh, and this book, I believe, was written by an author called Daniel Green, but I've been unable to trace the book or even, uh, you know, whether or not the, Daniel Green was the author. There is other Daniel Greens who are recorded, but I haven't found anything to this book. And the sad story is that I was taking this book from my dad's uh, house to an uncle's house, uh, uh, to, to, it wrapped up in a brown paper parcel, uh, and it was probably about a mile away. And somewhere along that journey, uh, I lost the book. Uh, my father was very distressed about it, but uh, I think sort of... Uh, his distress has passed on to me, and I'm still distressed to this day. <laughs> it's 